Hey yo, what's up my future AI experts? Let me show you in this tutorial how to calculate the mean and start a deviation of your custom images dataset. If you have the mean and start a deviation values of your training dataset, you can apply the normalization techniques, which will improve the performance of your neural network image classification model. It's very popular and quite powerful technique. Okie dokie, for this tutorial, I'm going to use the dataset, which is called 10 monkey species dataset. So it contains the images of 10 monkey species. Here is the example. Um, yep, so different monkeys. Let me show you how to do it. First of all, these are the imports which we are going to use for this tutorial. Now, let me just double check what's the current directory where I am at the moment. So, okay, I need to go inside the monkeys folder. Yep, training. Again, training. Here we go. So, here are our 10 monkey species. That's the path of our uh, training data set. So, training data set pass. Now, we will need to first of all apply some transformations. So, we need to transform this training data set. Okay, let's call it training transforms. So, transforms dot compose. We just need two things. First of all, we need to resize everything so that our images will be of the same size. However, guys, one point to notice. If you're resizing your data set uh, to calculate the mean and certain deviation values, make sure that when you will apply your normalization techniques, you, res you will resize uh, your data set to be of the same size as when you have calculated your mean and certain deviation. Because, okay, <clears throat> if you apply different resize value, the mean value will stay the same, However, the start of deviation will be different for, for different resize size. So make sure you will use the same size when you will resize it later. And we will need to, to convert everything to be a tensor. Okay, let me run it. It works. So, yep, so just these two transformations. And now, Let's, let's declare a train data set, torch vision dot data sets. Okay, root is equal to the training data set pass. And then transforms, actually transform is equal to the training transforms. Yep, all works. And now basically we need to, to make a data loader. Train loader. So data set is equal to our train data set. Batch size, um, to calculate the mean and start of deviation, actually the batch size doesn't matter that much. But yeah, 32 is okay. And we don't want to shuffle it. Let me run it. Works. Okay, now let's actually make this method. So get mean and std. And we will pass the train loader. Okay, so let's declare the mean value and start the deviation value. For now, they are equal to zero. Let's calculate the total images count. So it's zero for now. Okay, now we can um, now we can iterate through all of the images. Okay, we don't need the labels, so we can do like this in our loader, which we pass to this method. So when we will call this method, we basically just will pass the train loader. Okay, we are iterating through all of the images. Um, 
we have specified the batch size of 32. However, when we will get to the last batch, um, it might have a different size. So just double check. Let's count how many images are there in the batch. We can just um, say that the images count in the batch is equal to images uh, dot size zero. It will show us the amount of the images in the current batch. Also, let's take our images. Okay, we need to know how many are there. And poo -poo -poo, images of size one. So um, this line basically will reshape the images from our batch before reshaping, for example, if you just do print um, images.shape and we do the same thing here. So if we run this method, image is not defined of oh, images. <clears throat> so before reshaping, okay, let me just stop. So before reshaping, our tensor looked like this, but now we resized everything. And now we have like, you know, three values inside this array instead of four. So we need to reshape in order to calculate the mean and start deviation. Um, that's just the explanation of this line of code. Of this one. So once we reshaped, we can just, you know, update our current mean and start deviation value. There's the building function. We should do it for us. So let's sum all the mean values. And there's also another building function which will calculate the standard deviation. So it looks very similar. Let's sum. And let's update our total images count, which is equal. So we want to add the total count in a batch. Once we have iterated through all the images, and we incremented our mean and start deviation values. In the end, we can get the average. So we can just simply divide mean by the total amount of images. And we can do the same for the standard deviation. And basically, in the end, we can just return the mean and start a deviation value. So basically, this function it calculates the mean and start deviation value of each batch. It adds them to their uh, cumulative sums. And <clears throat> in the end, we just calculate the average by dividing by the total number of images. However, <clears throat> one thing to notice, uh, this function gives us the approximation of mean and start deviation. To calculate the actual mean and start deviation, you will need to pass the whole data set at once. However, guys, if you would, if your data set is quite large and you pass the whole data set at once, in this case, probably you will just run out of RAM. And in order to pass everything at once, first of all, you probably will need a very powerful machine and your data set still will need to be uh, not that large. So we cannot calculate like, the precise standard deviation and mean value, but we can calculate a very good approximation for the majority of the cases. Okay, let me check how it works. Let me run this method. It'll take some time. Okay, it took me probably 50 seconds to calculate the mean and start deviation. So here we go, guys. Um, this is our mean and this is our standard deviation. Yeah, that's it, guys. So having these values, you can apply the normalization and improve your, the performance of your model. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to apply the normalization techniques and how to also apply some data transformation techniques in order to make your model to be, to be more robust. So make sure you check out my next tutorial and see you guys.